Meanwhile, in West Asia, the winds of normalization are gaining speed. And after the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain has normalized ties with Israel. Two peace agreements with two Arab countries in less than a month. This is historic. And there's a high possibility that more Arab nations will follow suit and make peace with Israel. Which are these nations and what symbolic steps are they taking? In this report, we shall explore. And we'll begin with the very latest. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is in Washington, D.C. He's there to attend a lavish White House ceremony to mark the establishment of full relations with the UAE and Bahrain. The foreign ministers of the two countries are expected to join him and they will sign a normalization agreement. They call it the Abraham Accord. This will be Israel's third and fourth such peace treaty with Arab states. They signed a similar treaty with Egypt in 1979 and one with Jordan in 1994. Which other countries could be the next in line? Oman is a good bet. It congratulated Israel and the UAE after their agreement. In the past, Oman has played the role of interlocutor between Israel and the Arab world several times. In 2018, Oman's late Sultan Qaboos hosted Netanyahu for his first visit to the Gulf in more than two decades. Then in 2019, Netanyahu met Oman's foreign minister at the Warsaw Conference. A new Sultan is in power now, and he too views Israel as an attractive partner in diversifying his country's economy. Just last month, the U.S. Secretary met with Sultan Hetham bin Tariq in Muscat. Reports say that along with the U.S., the Sultan is deftly engineering a foreign policy that will accommodate Israel. Muscat's position on the Palestine conflict, much like other Arab states, has always been driven by economic and security interests. Oman has maintained secret diplomatic ties with Israel for years. It's only a matter of time before this relationship goes public. Then we have Morocco. Morocco, too, has often acted as a mediator between the East and the West. It is said to maintain a special relationship with Israel. Some 3,000 Jews live in Morocco, the largest such community in the Arab world. Besides this, this North African country's economic ties with Israel have been steadily growing. In January this year, Morocco received three Israeli drones as part of a $48 million arms deal. And in recent weeks, the Moroccan leadership has praised the Trump administration's peace plan. So don't be surprised if Rabat officially acknowledges the Israeli state. And now for the third Arab country on this list. And this will be huge when it happens. Saudi Arabia could recognize Israel. Look at the developments. The shakedom has been taking small but symbolic steps. First, it opened its airspace for all commercial flights between the UAE and Israel. A significant step that not only cuts down on the flying time, but also the animosity between the two sides. And this weekend, King Hamad of Bahrain sent a letter to King Salman of Saudi Arabia. The headline is on your screen. The Saudi foreign minister received the letter from Bahrain's ambassador in Riyadh. The two men are said to have discussed, quote unquote, international developments of common interest. Wonder what they were. But the biggest development has been this. The Imam of Mecca's Grand Mosque being accused of justifying normalization of ties. A recent sermon at the Grand Mosque has caused quite a stir in the kingdom and on social media. It is being seen as a prelude to Saudi Arabia recognizing Israel. This will be the most significant, even most controversial acknowledgement by an Arab nation. The Saudis, as you know, are the de facto leaders of the Islamic world. They're the guardians of Islam's holiest sites, Mecca and Medina. Saudi Arabia recognizing a Jewish state will be a turning point in Arab-Jew relations. But none of this has impressed the people of Israel. It's a seminal moment for Israel. Their Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, is set to sign the peace accord at the White House, but he may not be able to save his political career because despite such tremendous foreign policy breakthroughs, Israelis are unhappy with him. As Netanyahu departed for Washington, D.C., he was greeted by hundreds of demonstrators outside the Ben Gurion airport. These protesters call for his resignation. They want him sacked for his alleged graft offenses and his failure to manage the COVID-19 crisis. Israeli citizens are angry with their prime minister. So are some in the political establishment. Yaakov Litzman, Israel's former health minister and the current housing minister, has resigned. This is in protest of the government's decision to impose a general lockdown during the upcoming holiday period. You see, the Arabs may finally have begun talking to Netanyahu, but the Israelis seem to be losing faith in him. What a remarkable paradox.